I'm sharing with you is just letting you know that unit studies are not hard to create. You can create a unit study with anything. And I mean most anything. A lot of it you already have, you already own. So I want to give you some encouragement today to say, hey, it's okay. You too can create a phenomenal unit study. And I'm talking about a unit study that's so good, it doesn't just work for one age of child. Unit studies, I think, work best for those of us who have multiple children in varying ages if, if they cover that. So I have a big gap. Well, I mean, not huge. Um, Because me and my little sister are 17 years apart, so not a huge gap, but I have a large gap, I would say, five years between my oldest and then the next child. And in that, you know, obviously there are some age differences, there are some interest differences, but I have found ways to be very creative to ensure that we are all learning the same thing, just on different levels, requiring different responsibilities, and that way mommy does not go crazy teaching 75 different Things. So it's very helpful if every couple of months when I say this is what I want my children to learn, we're hitting this and it's going to be covered at the 6th, 7th grade level. It's going to be covered at the 1st, 2nd grade level and the preschool kindergarten level. And I have not had any complaints and the children love it so much. So my oldest is always like, what's next? You know, so let's go ahead. I want to give you a couple of examples on how I've done that recently. So our first family read aloud for the school year um, 19 to 2020 was Charlotte's Web. And we read this because it was part of Bam Bam's book shark curriculum for first grade. And Princess will be doing that next year. I really would have never picked Charlotte's Web for a first grader ever, ever, ever. I'm so glad that they did. Um, the vocabulary in here is amazing. The story I had never read. Maybe I read it when I was little, I don't remember, but it was really awesome to read it. I remember the movie. I did not remember the book. So it was really awesome to read this. And just letting the kids hear the story that we went and to make it a unit study, okay? We have Charlotte's Web. This is our thing we're covering. We're covering Charlotte's Web, okay? So then we take Charlotte's Web. We look in here for vocabulary words, okay? So that's how we're going to apply it to the little ones as well as the big ones. Vocabulary words. We're going to pull some words out of here. They're all, a lot of them are hard words. Um, you know, radiant is not a word that a first grader might necessarily use. But by the end of the book, the first grader should know what a radiant pig is or what radiant means um, and things like that. What humble means, that should be known. So we pulled some vocabulary out of this book. The next thing is we did story sequencing with this book. You do not have to create graphics or you do, you can, but you don't necessarily have to. You could honestly, if your child can read, um, what I did is I um, typed some passages up and I just used my cell phone and my pit collage app, okay? And then I printed it, okay? And I made four to six different little blocks in the pit collage, various size. I just picked a grid and typed in it. And what I did is I did that and allowed my first grader to story sequence the story. Okay, what happened first? What happened next? What happened after that? That's story sequencing. You're using the same book. That's what makes it a unit study. The next thing I came through for the little bitty one, I can use pictures. There's so many different graphics and then also this book includes pictures. You can take photocopies of those pictures. I cut them up and put them in order or allow her to put them in order. Makes it a unit study, okay? Story sequencing. For my oldest, I can have him retell the story. That's practicing speech. I mean, there's so many things that you could do to include, incorporate different subjects. The whole point of a unit study is to touch on various things, right? The next thing that um, we talked about is the um, types of food that a pig eats, okay? We know that pigs eat whatever you give them. So that was very interesting, okay? That's all sorts of science, okay? Because we're eating what the pig eats. What does a pig eat? So that's part of it. The next thing is art. How can you incorporate art into Charlotte's Web? Well, you can use your art and music. You can do songs, all sorts of stuff. Um, we did some spider hands. We did some other little crafts. But the most fun part they had was making origami pigs. So Bam Bam made his, and he named it Batman Ninja, or Bat Ninja. <laughs> I love baby writing his. Well, he's not a baby, but, you know, I love his little baby six-year-old writing. It's so cute. It's so cute. And then Tinky made her little pink 
little origami pig. And then Bear um, got a chance to do real origami and use the actual small origami paper and use an origami book and create some um, spiders and pigs and all that stuff. Now, obviously, it doesn't have to be origami. You can create pink pigs, you can use paper plates, whatever you want to do to incorporate art. But the main part of a unit study is incorporating different types of subjects, allowing research, and then making sure that it's covering everybody's level. It's fun for you to teach. It's fun for them to do. Okay. So even with the vocabulary, I may give the definition to the little ones, but that could be something that Bear studies and okay, I need you to give me six synonyms for this word. I need you to give me four for this word. I need to give you, give me an antonym. Okay. Use these and write a paragraph about those. Okay. How would you change the ending of a story? That's a writing assignment. So many things you can do with this to make it a unit study. I'm going to give you a couple of ideas for how I'm creating. Um, I'm going to give you a couple of things that I'm using to create the next two um, unit studies. Because right now we're about to jump into poetry and art. Um, poetry and weather, excuse me. So for my poetry unit study, I'm just brought in two things I'm using. I grabbed this book from my local library, How to Write Poetry, Scholastic Sky. Um, I glanced through it while I was in the library. I think this will be a very big help. For my oldest, it just breaks down different types of poetry and how you can write it, what to be looking for in poetry. Also grab some poetry. This is just one of the poetry books, but I have a bunch. But this beautiful day in the neighborhood, Mr. Rogers book of poetry, I think will go good. It will give me a chance to let them hear poetry all ages. And then not just that, but it give my oldest a chance to break down what type of poem it is. So that's something we'll be doing for poetry. Last thing I want to share with you real quick is weather. So, in order to incorporate various ages, I have this. Obviously, this will be for Bear to look at and gather some weather facts. Now, this is aside from me teaching, but just some things I'm using to pull. Science experiments are a really good way to tie everybody in. Guess what? Bear is 11. He'll be 12 soon. He'll probably be 12 by the time this video goes up. Um, he's able to conduct science experiments. When he's conducting his science experiment, I make him do it in front of the little ones. I make him tell them what he's doing, how he's doing it, what his hypothesis is, what his conclusions are, how everything. And I make him write it all down. So he has his lab report that he has to do, but I make him teach it as well because that's a lesson for them. And they may not ever remember it, but they are actually learning something. They're learning what to do. So experiments are a really good way to give responsibility to your older children and tie in your younger children. And then, of course, a little book to tie in the younger kids. Fly guy. Okay, what little boy does not love fly guy so same thing with you're watching videos cat in the hat knows all about weather okay you're learning from dr seuss characters little kids love that and then i tie something in for my oldest so it's definitely something that you can do it's not as hard as people are making it seem now i get it if you don't want to do it that's fine but literally guys it takes an idea maybe about 10 minutes of planning and that includes going online Reserving those books at your local library, okay? And then my library has a drive-thru. You ain't even got to get out the park, okay? You just got to drive through to pick up your books. Bing, bang, boom, unit study. You have a month of lessons. Spread them out however you want to. Make it a fun Friday thing or whatever you want to do. We're going to go ahead and let you go. If you have any questions, comment down below. Always don't forget to visit www.tanishakemp.com so you can see what I'm talking about, what I'm bragging about. What I'm sharing, what I'm telling that my kids did that are so awesome. You know, I love the cool kids, what they did that's awesome. And more importantly, how you can be encouraged, how you can be motivated, how you can be uplifted. You get all of that there at TanishaKemp.com, okay? So make sure you do that. Of course, I always subscribe to this channel and thumbs this video up. If you don't like doing unit studies, but you are motivated about creating them, if you love them, unit studies, thumbs this video up, all right? Thank you so much for tuning in. I will see you guys in the next video. Happy homeschooling. Meow. <coughs>